All right, so I just got back from burying my mother, and I'm um, sitting out here in the pool, and the sky's lighting up tonight. Lit up with all kind of craft, whatever you want to call them. Government, UFOs, aliens, angels, I don't care what you call them, but they're real. They exist, and here they are. No, this is not a drone. It's a huge ship. It's just hard for people to see my perspective because, you know, I'm so far away from where they are coming in the sky. And now my son is living in my RV here, which has my skyline blocked at my pool, you know, where they come in. So I'm not able, from the pool, I'm not able to watch them flicker in. I have to be upstairs in my on the balcony. But yeah, see it? How big it is? As it's getting closer, you can see. There's a tree line right there, so you can see the kind of a distance, get a perspective of where it is in the sky. <laughs> Tonight the moon's looking like um blood on it like there's a huge planet right behind it it didn't show up that way on camera it's it's not a full moon it's, it's like a half moon you know but on camera it appears full that's because of the shape that's right behind it there's that ship it's gone up higher in the sky now moving on and the moon the moon still isn't appearing to be half moon because whatever's behind it, that halo, is making it look like a hole, you know, like a full moon. This is um, June the 8th. You can look it up yourself and see. It's not a full moon right now. Anyway, I just thought I'd come on and document one or two of these craft that are coming through. I'm on my the phone, it's not really, it doesn't have good camera on it. This is an LG Stylo 5, I think. It's one of my older phones. It's my newer one broke. And uh, the brand new one I got, it's, they sent me a T-Mobile that's locked and I was supposed to be able to use it for um, AT&T and Cricket. They said it was unlocked, but I, I'm going to have to jailbreak it. It's going to be a pain in my patootie. You know, I used to jump into that stuff head first, you know. Technology when I was young, and I love to learn, and I love to do, you know, new things. But now it's just a pain in the butt, man. I can barely make myself uh, delete cookies, you know, <laughs> and defrag. It's just a chore. I find myself, you know, since I'm disabled, I try to be more leisurely. I don't really get a lot accomplished. I run around like a chicken with my head cut off a whole lot trying to get stuff done. But I don't really get a lot done, and it is what it is, you know. I worked hard my whole life, and um, the few years I've got left, I'm going to enjoy them. And I'm not saying I'm it's me, 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 okay? I'm not saying that, because... You know, that's not what I mean. I spend time with my loved ones and my family. I'm not all about just me. But, you know, those of us that were raised in the 70s and 80s, we were taught to feel guilty, you know, for thinking about ourselves. We were always giving to others. And, um, you know, I'm just saying now that my children are grown and I've got grandchildren, you know, I just enjoy life a little bit more. Do what is enjoyable, you know. What's the sense in killing myself and hurting my body, you know, to get things done so they can be immaculate just so other people can come along behind me and trash it all back up. You know what I mean? I don't mean hoard or filth. I just mean 
you know, people don't respect all the hard work somebody does. And eventually people get tired. And I'm at the point. <laughs> you know, if you don't want to keep it clean, then live in the mess. You know, if I've cleaned it, keep it the way you found it. Clean up your own mess. And, and I'm not being ugly. I just hate it whenever uh, everything gets dug through. Like a Tasmanian turd came through and trashed everything. And they don't put things back the way they found them, you know? They're in such a big hurry to find whatever and they just leave things the way they, they found them. Boy, it was a long, long trip going to um, Eagle Lake from, from the Dallas area. My goodness. It just seemed like it took forever, you know, to get there. And it was way out in the country. More country than me, actually. Yeah. It was really country. And the funeral home was on a residential block. And it was a house. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was nice. It was, it was a nice service. The people were, were good. My mother was put in a, an immaculate coffin. And then my stepdad paid to have whatever it is that goes around the, the casket that seals it up, you know, that saves them from mud and bugs and all that getting into the, the casket. You know, it was really nice. Larry went out of his way, my mother's husband. You know, they were together like 31 years. And um, he went out of his way to give her a nice funeral. And, and I love that. <laughs> I really, really respected that. Because my mom, you know, she had a hard life. She really did. She struggled a lot, you know, to take care of us kids. And, you know, there's so many things that some of us have no idea, you know, what she had to go through just to, to make sure everybody was taken care of. And she, she, she did whatever she had to do to take care of her kids, you know. We were never hungry, and we never did without. We might not have um, had a whole lot after my dad left us, but... Or after my mom got with my alcoholic stepdad, you know, not not the one she was married to for 31 years, um, but the one after my dad, you know, things were tough, but she always managed to see things through, you know. And my mom was fortunate because she had good parents who loved her, and you know they cared it. They cared deeply for her. They were always there to help us out when we needed it, you know. So we were very fortunate. We had my, had my grandparents around, but um, now she's gone home. And not only did I find out my mother passed away, but I found out seven months ago my aunt Margaret, my mama's baby sister, passed. I didn't even know that. So yeah, it's a lot. I'm, I'm mourning two people, two family members who I loved greatly and respected and adored so much. But um, anyway, it's it's all done now and. Maybe I can try to get my life back in order, you know, because I grieved my mother's death hard, you know, because she died on the 30th of, of May, and we just buried her today on the 8th of June, and I've just been mourning her and mourning her, my God, you know, but I know she's in a better place, you know, because those of us that believe in Jesus Christ and we believe in God, we know that when we die, it's not the end, it's only the beginning. Because we escape this, this, you know, sinful flesh, this meat suit, and our soul gets to go be in perfect harmony with our Creator and our loved ones, you know, because we know our loved ones in heaven. Yes, we do. So my mama, she's with her Uncle Ray, you know, who was killed. She's with her, her sister Margaret. She's with her mama and her daddy. And um, one day I pray that I'm worthy that I'll be able to join them, you know. I pray that one day I'll be up there with my mama again. Because I'm going to miss her. I don't know how many years I've got left on this earth. But however many years I'm here, I'm going to miss her. I'm going to miss, you know, knowing that I can just pick up the phone and call my mama. Because she's gone now. And she looked so, she looked so good. You know, they, they did such a good job on her. But... She was, oh wow, she had white hair. My mother never allowed her hair to go white. 
She always kept her, kept her hair colored, and her hair was white, silver and white. I couldn't believe it. And she was so tiny and fragile and frail looking. And my mama was a big woman. I mean, not fat. She was like five foot eleven and a half, tall, big tall woman. You know, I and mean, she was always a nice size. Not, she never been fat. She could wear a bikini at the age of fifty and look good. You know, she was just lucky like that. But uh, she was so thin. She, she broke her hip a few years ago, and um, she just couldn't come back. She couldn't gain any weight. She was just a little tiny thing. And um, my husband, he really mourned her, too. He cried. Ooh. I had to go outside. I just couldn't stand it, you know? I mean, you can come to me when chaos is happening. You can come to me in an emergency, and I'll always pull through. I, I thrive under chaos, okay? But when it comes to the death of a loved one, when it comes to death, I don't tolerate that well. I can't handle death. I just, you know, even though I know that they're they're moving on to a better place, I just don't handle death well, you know? I crumble. And um, it's just who I am. I don't fear death, don't get me wrong. I don't fear death. You know, I feel like that's the great escape from this hellbound earth. You know, I mean, this earth is destined to be destroyed, just like America is destined to be judged. And believe me, anybody who's walking around in La La Land thinking that they're safe from judgment, mm -mm. if you're an American citizen, you are under the judgment of America. Now, if you follow Jesus and you believe in God, God promises he'll see you through. But that doesn't mean you're not going to suffer. That does not mean that, that you're not going to have to go through some stuff. Because when your country's under judgment, guess what? You fall under that path. You know? That's righteous redemption right there. You know what I mean? All these evils are going to have to be paid for. They're going to have to be redeemed. You know? God's going to come knocking. He's going to come calling. He's going to come calling for all these wicked, evil people to answer for all this stuff they've done. And if you're in this country, you're going you're gonna to be right here under it. You know, God does promise that he'll give us clothing and food and he'll take care of his people. You know, he promises that we'll, we'll be cared for. But um, get prepared. Judgment's coming, people. That's all I can say. Judgment is coming. This country is about to face some really strong judgment because we've fallen too far along the wayside. We've fallen, we've gone too far. We're past the point of no return now. We're going over the, the waterfall. We're going over that cascade. I just want you to know that. Anyway, my battery's about to die, so I'm gonna shut up and get off of here. And um, hope everybody's having a wonderful night. Hug on your loved ones. Let them call your mom and daddy if they're still alive. Your siblings. Let them know you love them. Because you never know. You know what COVID did. How it took so many of our loved ones away. Well, death has been, you know, all our lives. We've known it as a natural occurrence. And sometimes it's, you know, way too soon. Due to what have you, you know, that, that might happen. But remember, it, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Let your loved ones know you love them, please. Reach out and touch someone. I love you, and I'll talk to you next time. May you all be blessed in Jesus' most precious name. If you love Jesus, shout an amen and a hallelujah. <laughs>